Hello, my sweet summer children. I'm back with some juice to get you through the long night. So there are these leaks air quotes <laughs> and alleged spoilers and I'm just over here like get it away get it away get it away now so you guys know like I'm not the leak police or any kind of shit like that like leaks are fine if that's your thing season seven leaks I was all about them but I'm avoiding season eight spoilers to be honest I mean I'm down for a set photo or a cast and call but I don't want to know the dialogue and exactly what's gonna happen in season eight so I destroyed the first set of leaks in a previous video I will link that in case you want to watch it so to be completely honest with you season 7 was leaked yes it was but there are no leaks for season 8 the showrunners Dan and Dave and HBO and everyone involved took tons of precautions to prevent all the leak scenes and dialogue and outline shenanigans that happened last year they, they went through extreme precautions to keep the details under wraps so Nickelodeon Costco Walmart cuz I can't can't say his name for shit he's the actor that portrays Jamie he did an interview with Elite Daily and he said they had digital scripts that self-destruct they're very very strict said Costco Walmart it reached a crazy level this year we actually get the scripts and then when we've shot the scene and we only have it digitally and then when you're done the scene it just vanishes it's like Mission Impossible this was self-destruct and Sophie Turner, the actress that plays Sansa, said what Nickelodeon Costco Walmart said was all true. Yeah, it's all true. I mean, we wouldn't get anything physical. We would have it on an app. We would get sent sides for the scene we were shooting the next day. So we would have to learn it all the day before. And once you've read it, it disappears 24 hours later and you can never access it again. It's tighter than White House security. So all of the leaks that you may have heard about or seen on Reddit, it's fan fiction, it's educated guesses, and that's okay too, but if it's fan fiction that you want, why didn't you just tell me? I could have wrote my own fan fiction for you. But on a serious note, back in April, I was contacted by Boston University. They had a spring course on Game of Thrones. They even said that some of my videos were homework. Like, that's not every day that something like this happens. First of all, did you know that prestigious college or universities offered courses on Game of Thrones. I was completely mind blown. I got an email from Cam Miller and she is a veteran TV writer and producer and she created the course and she was like, it's not every day I get to ask a writing room to tell me why the Night King's army is trash. And I was like, you know what? Cam is a winner. So anyway, the BU students, I'm guessing they're like film students, writing students, I'm not sure. But they used all of their smarts and TV knowledge and things and they wrote how they think Game of Thrones will end. And they did a virtual reading. And I mean like, it's awesome. They read it in like the characters' voices. They're like voice actors. It was broadcasted. HBO lent them the Iron Throne. Like it's really good. So they did six episodes, The Last Hearth, All Men Must Know Fear, Kings of Winter, The Pack Survives, The War for Dawn, and Lightbringer. So I'm going to provide the links so you can watch all of the episodes that they did. But what I'm going to do for you today is review episode one of what these students have came up with. And I'm going to tell you, I think you're going to like it. And I can do some more reviews on the other episodes if you would like. Being that these students are smart and they're studying this kind of stuff and working with actual veteran TV writers, I think they might be on to something. Anyway, just go to their channel and tell them Gray Area sends her regards. <laughs> so in the version of episode one, I'm just going to say I really loved most of it. Like one, I could see most of the things going down like this. There are some things like I'm thinking like that's kind of a stretch, but they have more experience with episode pacing than I do. So they could be right. But let's talk. So episode one is called The Last Hearth and it's a cold opening. Daenerys is still on the ship and she's in bed with Jon. A cold breeze blows through a spacious cabin. Daenerys Targaryen shivers beneath her fur blanket next to Jon Snow. Daenerys clutches her arms as she tosses in her sleep, trying to shake an unprecedented nightmare. So I guess then that the camera kind of pans to the northern night sky. And Daenerys is panicked and alone. She flies through the sky. She scans the skies above and the sea of clouds below her. The sun cracks the horizon. It's dawn. Instinctively, she tries to cover her eyes but realizes she is a dragon. A screech rings out, a painful one but familiar. 
Viserion, he is alive. Daenerys hears another screech, and she sees Viserion descend, and him and the army of the dead obliterate the last hearth. Daenerys then wakes up in bed with Jon Snow. She tells Jon that she dreamt the Night King attacked, and it was some place in the north and it felt so real. John apologizes to her again about having to watch Viserion die, and she says that the dream was like she was him, watching what he saw and feeling what he felt, feeling his pain. So then I guess that the credits would come on and it'd be like da 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 Just kidding. But seriously guys, I do really like that kind of cold opening. Daenerys having a dragon dream and seeing Viserion and the army of the dead destroy the last hearth. To me, that is very plausible because the last hearth is literally the next stop now that the Night King has breached the wall. And me personally, I always wanted Daenerys to see Viserion. I kind of think it might be Bran that witnesses the slaughter of the last hearth folk or, or even Beric and Tormund and they kind of relay it to Jon. But I want Daenerys to see Viserion. I don't want her to hear about it from someone else. I want to see the fury that she will have when she sees her White Walker baby. But anyway, so after the credits, we're inside Winterfell's Great Hall. Sansa and Bran are sitting at the head of a table and the Northern Lords are clamming around all noisy-like, trying to be heard. In a nutshell, everyone is pissed about Jon bending the knee to Daenerys. Different lords are shouting and Sansa basically comes to Jon's defense and shuts them down. And then Bran speaks up saying that Jon is a day's ride away and Arya has already left to meet him. And Bran tells them that the wall has been breached. Yeah, he tells them that too. So I can 100% see something like that happening. I don't think the Northern Lords will be happy that Jon has bent the knee to a Southern ruler. Southern rulers have brought them naught but misery. So I think this scene or something similar is going to be spot on. Then we are at the wall at Castle Black. A horn wakes up Dolores Ed and Beric and Tormund are at the gates. They have some survivors with them from Eastwatch. They tell Dolores Ed about Viserion ripping through the wall. Beric and Tormund are saying they need to go south and join the Northern Army. And Ed is like, nah. The Night's Watch has never abandoned their post in the history of Westeros. But after some convincing, Ed decides to leave Winterfell at first light. I can say this is likely what's going to happen. We know that Beric and Tormund survived. They escaped. They will make it to Castle Black and let Ed know what happened. And literally, they are no use on the wall at this point. So there is no other option other than to go south. Especially since the enemy that they were waiting for has went around them. So the next scene is Arya on the hill staring out at the King's Road. She hears dragons screeching and she sees them circling in the sky. She sees, I guess, snow being kicked up by the Dothraki hooves and she winds up getting into a duel with one of the Dothraki blood riders because she's asking for Jon and the Dothraki warrior is like, get away from here, you little sewer rat. So Arya is getting the best of him as Daenerys and Jon walk up on her. Jon and Arya reunite and hug. Arya talks to Jon and Daenerys and tells them about the Night King riding into battle on the back of a dragon that breathes blue fire. Jon walks Arya to her tent and asks her where she got a Valyrian steel blade. She's like from Bran. Jon talks about Daenerys and Arya approves of Daenerys. And I really like the line that they wrote. Arya says, father married a southern girl and yours has dragons. Okay, so I like the thought that Arya rides forth to meet Jon and company, sort of like an honor guard from Winterfell. The little quarrel with the Dothraki is an interesting way for Jon to find Arya. She's winning the quarrel, very much a different girl than he remembers, so I really like this idea and I think it could happen. I also really like the comparison between Jon and Ned, like when Arya says, you know, Ned married a southerner, Catelyn Tully, but your southerner has dragons. So Arya accepts John's southern girl. So in King's Landing, Kyburn and Cersei are talking. Apparently tales of Daenerys' dragons and such are inspiring people to switch sides and sing songs of Daenerys Stormborn, the Unburnt, and her dragons. Cersei orders that anyone that supports or shows any basically favor towards Daenerys be executed. So on the silence, Euron has Yara and Kenvara. You know Kenvara, the Red Priest. It's stormy, it's wavy, so Euron basically wants to bang Yara, or at least creep her out. I mean, he creeped me out. I'm really creeped out by Euron. So Euron cuts Kinvara and lets her blood drip into the water. He's basically doing some form of blood magic, and it works. It clears the skies and calms the seas. This is in line with the Forsaken chapter. Euron was collecting warlocks and holy people. Euron also has Yara, so all of that makes sense. I'm not sure the show is going to introduce this part of Euron. 
like the whole magical part, the blood sacrifice part. But it's something I would love to see personally, but I don't think the show is going to introduce it. So then Arya is in camp with Jon and Daenerys, but she's like at her own fire, sharpening her blade to the beat of the Dothraki drums. And then the Hound reunion happens. They talk and it's funny and Arya invites him to serve at Winterfell as long as he takes a bath. Then we have Daenerys and Drogon and Tyrion and they talk about the loss of Viserion. Daenerys confides in Tyrion that she isn't happy about letting Jon speak for her. They watch as the dragons take to the sky. When day breaks, they get ready to to ride for Winterfell. Arya and Jon are already on their horses watching their dragons circle from above. She looks at Jon and they talk about old Nan's stories and how Arya thought they were just fantasies and they weren't real. And then the dragons swoop close to them as they ride and Arya says, I wish father could see them. And to that, Jon says, I wish he could see you. So Daenerys is sad as she watches two dragons circle the sky where there should be three. So I like all of this because this is underscoring how messed up Daenerys is going to be about Viserion's death in season 8. How fearful she is going to be to lose another dragon. She's going to be very careful with her dragons now that she knows how vulnerable they are. So I do think that that is going to be an interesting thing that rears its head in the season 8 plot. So when we go to King's Landing, kids are playing outside. There's two boys and they're fighting with a stick and a girl jumps on a crate or a barrel and she says, I'm Daenerys. Targaryen, the unburnt, and I will burn you with my dragons. One of Cersei's guards or gold cloaks over here and take the girl to Cersei. And Cersei basically kills her, and the girl's like seven. And so Cersei kills her, burns her, and puts her body in the streets with a sign that says the unburnt. This is particularly savage, even for Cersei. I don't think they will have, like, time for this kind of thing, but we'll see. So Jon's arrival is full of Daenerys haters. But anyway, Bran and Sam tell Jon about his parentage in private. Sansa supports him. Daenerys doesn't like it, and she says that she will not support him if he makes a claim. And in fact, if he does make a claim, she will show him no mercy, which he openly says to everyone that he has no interest in the Iron Throne and basically renounces any claim that he has. But Sansa is like, no, you're the rightful heir. In the meantime, Bran tells Daenerys that she will never sit on the Iron Throne. Savage Bran. And basically that Viserion is a slave now that he's dead. And Euron is making blood sacrifices to a Kraken. Oh yeah, and Sam doesn't like Daenerys. So I don't think Sam will have any issue with Daenerys. Yes, Daenerys killed Sam's brother and father, but people die in war all the time. And they took up arms against her. I'm also not sure that John learns about his true parentage in episode one. I thought it would be much later and I also can't see Daenerys having this kind of alone time with Bran where he tells her that she'll never be the queen and all that razzle dazzle. Like I don't think that's gonna happen but what do you think? Don't forget to watch the entire episode read through. I will have them linked below. It's really some juice that will help you get through the long night. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks to everyone that supports me on Patreon. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please click that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and join the Sweet Summer family. Okay, my sweet summer children, have a good day.